What's up guys? So, obviously, if you've clicked on this video, you are interested in learning how to run your own business through woodworking. Um, even if it's just a kind of a side hustle, you know, to make some extra money, uh, you want to pay for vacations, you want to buy some extra tools, things like that. Um, or if you want to make it a full-time business, I've done both. Let me show you how I'm going to give you some different tips and tricks and we'll start at the beginning, you know, kind of how, how I would find a product that I wanted to make, um, how I would market it all the way to shipping the logistics behind everything. So let's get started. We have a lot to go over. Okay, so everyone is gonna start the same way. Whether you already have a woodworking business, uh, you already have the side hustle, um, or if you're just getting started, you're going to first think, what tools do I have you know, maybe you can't go out and buy a new tool just because you want to make something. So work with what you have. Don't go out and buy all of this new equipment that you're gonna to have to try to sell this stuff to, uh, to pay off. Uh, remember, this is supposed to be, you know, fun and also profitable. So if you start in debt, then you really uh, are under the gun to make money. Um, when you become stressed, you make crappy, products. I mean, you have to, uh, you have to be, I guess, kind of free whenever you're doing this. Okay. So that way, whenever something actually hits and takes off and you're selling them like crazy, you have no worries. The only thing that you have next to think about is, Hey, what am I going to use this money for? An example of you do not have to have the best of the best equipment. Almost every single one of my projects that I have done and sold and made thousands of dollars doing it were made with a skill saw, a job site uh, table saw that I had just set up in my garage and air nailer, glue, things like that. I did not have to use a joiner. I did not have to use a planer. I did not have to use shapers or anything, you know, all this fancy stuff. That can come down the road. I did not have to have, and this is key, I did not have to have a CNC router or a laser. Do not make that mistake of going into debt to buy a CNC router or a laser right off the bat. Don't do it, it's not worth it. Everyone out there is doing it and they're not really making much money. Example of this, my wife came to me one day course you know I make things I hate buying something that I can make so she said hey we need some uh, coasters for the house and she was showing me some pictures of these different coasters so on and so forth and I had some extra you know antique four by fours longleaf pine laying out back so I'm like okay I'll make you some coasters so I actually went out back took a piece of four by four just like this and sliced it into three quarter inch slices just on the miter saw, sanded it up a bit, uh, put some polyurethane on it, put some of the little, you know, anti-slide sticky things on the bottom, whatever the heck they're called, and they're beautiful. I mean, the grain of the wood popped like crazy with that, with that urethane. It's in grain. It's going to be hard as a rock. She loved them. So she put on Facebook, you know, just a picture of it, this picture. She put on Facebook just the picture of the coasters. And of course she staged them up. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, everyone wanted them. How much are they? I need five. I need how many ever. Before I knew it, I had 50 orders for coasters that I didn't even agree to sell. I mean, she had literally already sold 50 sets of these coasters. And you know how much just these end cuts of this scrap sold for? $30 a set. $30 for a set of five. We put an extra one in there. And that's literally all that I needed was a, this piece of scrap wood, where well, it was scrap to me, a miter saw sandpaper and some urethane. That's what I'm talking about. You have to think outside of the box and you can make something out of nothing. Okay, so once you have the idea of what your limitations are, 
So what, um, basically the extent of what you can make with the tools that you have. Now you have to start planning. Actually get a piece of paper out, write some things down, okay? You have to do your homework here. Go on to Etsy, go on to Facebook Marketplace, see what is actually selling. I'm not saying copy what they're making, but see what type of things are selling. Also with this homework, you have to decide, do I want to ship items? or do I just want to sell locally? Because it's gonna make a big difference between the two because if you're shipping items, you have to factor in the cost of shipping because nowadays you cannot just put shipping is gonna be $50 extra. You have to incorporate that into the price, put it as free shipping because no one wants to pay for shipping. They won't do it. You can post an item for X amount, an item with the shipping added in, They'll buy that item 10 to 1 before they will the other, even though it's cheaper. So all of this homework has to be done before you even get started. So before you even go to the store, of course you have to know what you're going to build. So once you have found the item that you want to build, let's say that it's a, a picture frame, okay? Of course you're not going to just start with picture frames, but let's just use that as an example. Now you have to, on your paper, sketch it out, you know, or if you see a picture of one that you like, that you want to try to do something similar to, sketch it out, write what materials you expect to have to use in order to build that, what you're gonna have to buy from the store, and basically you make a mock cut list. That way, whenever you go to the store to purchase these items, you already have a list and before you even get started you can see how much roughly that this one item is going to cost you to make and how much that they're actually selling for you don't want to make an item that's going to cost you five dollars to make and they're selling for five dollars that's all a part of your homework but once you have the uh, the magical item that you're going to make Make sure that you're well prepared, you write down everything, and my motto is, if I'm gonna build one, I'm gonna build 10, okay? Now, I may build one just to see how it goes, see how much time that I have involved, you know, all of that, see how it turns out. Some things that we draw out or have in our heads don't turn out the way that uh, we see them in our heads. Then, once you have picked something out, when you go to purchase the items for this, it is cheaper to buy in bulk. So that is gonna bring your profit margin up. A big part of the planning also is gonna be whether you're gonna ship or you're just gonna sell on marketplace or local. A lot of the items that I have done, I've just made for local, local pickup. Which when I say local pickup, I've had people drive a half of a day just to come pick up some of my so items. Just because you're putting it on Marketplace does not mean that you know, you're only gonna be selling to the people in your area. The reason why I do not like selling on Etsy is because I do not like shipping items. I do not like packaging items, and I do not like people getting items not the way that I shipped it. To each their own. And again, I like to make large items. Um, the smalls are awesome. Actually, the smalls have the biggest profit margin. Um, but if you run across some material that are perfect for tables, um, let's say you run across that barn coming down or a house coming down or anything like that, and you want to distress up some tables, or you can just make, you know, make your own distressing video on that too, how to distress wood, and you make up your tables. Um, people will come and get them because what everyone else is selling is just the plain harvest tables or farmhouse tables. You make yours different, they'll come and pick it up. So incorporate that in the planning. You do not want to ship something large like a table. And if you are going to ship, make sure to call around or get online and find out exactly how much this, was, this is going to cost to ship. It's going to be based on weight of the item and the dimensions of the item. Um, not just the item itself, but once it is packaged and there is a threshold there, so you have to be careful. Whenever an item goes over a certain dimension, the price almost doubles 
to ship to the same place. Again, do your homework on that as well. All right, so one of my biggest tips for building anything 